And a welcome back, of course, this is K24 this morning. Looking at the big stories uh, of the day right here, and of course, uh, getting your views at K24 uh, TV. You can SMS us on 2122 as we get into the third and final uh, leg of uh, this particular segment. Uh, talking about the state of uh, the capital city, and of course, Nairobi County as well, and the politics therein with what's uh, going on uh, right now. Uh, Dennis, I'm sure you saw uh, the drama that was uh, the Nairobi County Assembly yesterday. Yes. Uh, and this is uh, the second time in uh, less than a month that this has happened. This specific concerning uh, the Speaker of the Assembly, Beatrice Alachi, and her being, uh, coming back to office. How do you deal with this? Because people say, yes, this is the most sensitive um, uh, county, so to speak. The power sits here. A lot happens here. Should we just relook how we're dealing with this uh, capital city of Nairobi? I've said before, and I think I might not change my mind in terms of my opinion about uh, the county of Nairobi. I think we need to remove it from amend the constitution and remove the county of Nairobi from being a county as other counties. If we could make it a ministry in the national government, that's okay, because even the functions that have been you know, uh, devolved to which the county government is supposed to take charge, they are not really relevant in Nairobi by its nature, its composition and the issues around it. Probably a few things like garbage, you know, water, but those are things that probably could be taken to a, by a different level of, right. of, of operation. Mm -hmm. Because when you see the politics that is around uh, my good friend, uh, 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 Beatrice Elachi, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. She just came back to office the other day, dramatically, so to speak, after she realized that she had a court order and nobody wanted to respect it. Mm -hmm. uh, she decided to play her politics and go into office. It can't be that you want to destabilize the same setting within a span of one or two weeks. It's not possible. If, even when we could say that she has flouted the law, it's not possible to have happened. This is a question of politics. Right. And the effect is that, that then the county government is not going to deliver. Right. It's actually running on its own engine. It, it means we have seen cases where the governor disappears and goes out of the country and there's nobody in charge and it keeps mm -hmm. running itself. Right. Things simply happen. It tells mm -hmm. you we don't even need the governor in the first place. Uh -huh. That is what basically telling you. Right. We don't need the governor, we don't need the MCS, we don't need anything. If you go back to various wards within Nairobi, you will hardly feel the effect of those MCS. Apart from campaigns where you see posters and everything else, people in Nairobi run their own lives. They are not interested. You, are, you, remain, you live a bad road, people just move on with life. Mm -hmm. They are not really able to even access their same MCS to, allege, to demand for assistance or ask anything. Right. So we need to rethink on the need to have Nairobi County as a county government right. under the constitution as, as, as other governments. And uh, I'll bring in Honorable Keone on this. Uh, for some people looking at the fact that it's not uh, the county government uh, that's an issue. This is party politics that has really swept into uh, this county government as of now. Looking at a point in time where we had uh, the SG, Raphael Tuju, calling uh, the, the different factions to, to the party headquarters. They agreed that they're going to move forward uh, and make sure that Elachi can do her work. I think less than a week later, the same Jubilee MCAs who had gone to see Tuju are the same ones seeking her impeachment. What is, is, is this party politics that has now seeped into the capital and we are paying for that? Uh, mm -hmm. Again, one of the things, again, we just talked about it uh, a while ago, uh, the court orders. We have a court order uh, reinstating uh, Speaker the Speaker Elachi and is the court order she's, she's using mm -hmm. to go back to her a position of being a speaker to the county assembly of Nairobi. But you ask yourself whether that court order, uh, you cannot say, you cannot ask whether it was a well thought out thing, but how implementable is it? You know, um, I hold this position that if I have been elected by the person sitting around this table, elected, voted for, to share the meeting here, and these same people then say, we elected you, but I don't think, we don't think you can longer uh, be useful to us. And then you rush to court and get a court order to be put back to this seat to share the same meeting of the people who rejected you. I think the courts are just playing games. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have a right to be reinstated, but perhaps a different order, maybe to be paid off or something, would be useful. Because you were just making it impossible. I am yet to see a person who was elected to uh, of, uh, you know, preside over such functions. Forget about being elected as a member of parliament because you can be put back mm -hmm. by a court order. 
and uh, you never call your constituents together to share a meeting. Right. That you know, you, you, can, you can be put to do things when you are still far. Mm -hmm. Not that you'll be, you'll be effective, but you, you can lie that there's something that you're doing. But when you are sitting in a board meeting and you've been put back by the court to share the same board that rejected you, I think what the courts are doing is just to add to the paralysis of the institution. Right. And this is what I think that order. Nothing against the Rashi. But the order to tell Arashi to go back and share the, the county assembly mm -hmm. really is to polarize. Uh, right. the, and we can now see what is happening. Mm -hmm. Again, the, we now are told that we didn't see it, but there's a, another team that is saying, we also now have another court order telling Arashi uh, you mm -hmm. know, that if such a court order also exists, then you can actually see the judiciary feeding into the difficulties that we have right. uh, in, that, uh, in that thing. But there comes the, the, the next question that was raised by my colleague um, here, that if you have the history of this city, you remember there was a time we had even the city fathers. We used to call them the city fathers. And I think that is where we had uh, the former minister, Fred Gumo, and all those pe people who served in the city commission. I think we were calling it the city commission. Mm. And it was moved from the city council because of the same uh, shenanigans, the same difficulties brought in some city fathers. I don't know whether they behaved well. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of rooting that went on, even when we had the city fathers. All pointing to one fact, that the way we've been managing our capital city is certainly not the correct way. It's not working, and it is time to think of it differently. We have now a governor whom you cannot quite say you know where he is. Mm -hmm. it, you cannot be a governor of a capital city and you're completely unavoidable, you are out of sight, we, we don't even know whether, you know, that is also not some. So, as we sit here, there are many proposals that have been put on the table. And I want to tell you that the committee I share, again, we sent some three members, not very far, just here to Nigeria to see how do they manage their, their city called Abuja now. And it is completely done, different from what we are doing. The elections are held, and once you have a president, the president is given the mandate to appoint a minister to run the capital city of Nigeria, and that minister sits in cabinet. Because I want to agree totally with the sentiments of my colleague here that we cannot manage this capital city like a political entity. It is a political entity, but not in a manner that it is for political competition. It is where we bake our cake. This is where we do most of our businesses in this country. Right. It is the city where visitors first, it's our mirror of who we are as a country, how we manage ourselves. Right. But if we had now a foreign dignitary yesterday, and then he sees uh, people uh, being hooded, I saw people being hooded like, uh, mm. you know. Out uh, of a press conference. Yes, and uh, you know, really like, uh, there must have been a uh, harder there, somebody who knew how to. <laughs> <laughs> he was really looking in control on how to bring this and, and all of them into one door. Um, it doesn't help us improve our image. And we must quickly, uh, even as we talk about BBI, we must quickly agree that the way we are managing the capital city is not the correct way. The right. proposal we have on the table is remove Nairobi city from the 47. Let's amend the constitution to say that we have 46 counties. Yes. Let's give this capital city to be managed by the executive. Right. Whoever wins the presidency manages the city. Right. He is the one who is receiving visitors. He should know how to receive visitors best. This is where he, he makes his money to run the country. He should have his hand on it on a day-to-day -day basis. We need somebody to sit in the cabinet to say the economy is growing or we, we can only help you collect more by doing this to the capital city. Right. For example, I know it should come from Treasury, but even some, some, the minister who will be in charge of this metropolitan uh, city or town, whatever we, 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 we call it, we should also be able to say if we reduce the, the, the taxation level for people doing businesses here, we are likely to grow more businesses. We are likely to see more people coming. And, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of debates is what we would want to see. Less right. of uh, uh, the things that we are seeing. I don't understand what the, the county assembly uh, of Nairobi 
how it, is, it, it can help us grow our economy. But Honorable Kioni, let me just it's ask also, even us. as we wait for um, the BBA report to come and see if it will actually address But we, have, we already have constitutional amendments on the table that are ahead of where the BBI is. For this particular By far. Um, yeah, ahead by far. From now, um, as we're looking at it, because we'd assume with the Jubilee as a ruling party of the day, surely it should be able to call these people together because this is... It's, it's, it's a very strange time we're living in when you mm -hmm. have ODM uh, uh, party members supporting the speaker who was brought in by Jubilee mm. and the Jubilee members wanting their speaker out. Don't you have a scenario where once even the Secretary General has spoken to their troops, so to speak, there's some order within the party? We, we'd but, have assumed. But yes, 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 yes. This is exactly what, uh, this is the reality that you are living in. There are those perceived, the things we always thought would work that when you have a majority party controlling the city, things will run smoothly. Mm -hmm. We have seen it not working since uh, those days of city fathers. Mm -hmm. We are now in parliament where we have the majority of members in Jubilee and we had the heart check and uh, ODM, is it mm -hmm. NASA or the ODM mm -hmm. have come on board and they are actually looking more government than, than Jubilee. Than the, gov the ruling party and, itself. Uh, <laughs> so we, may have, we have to look for solutions elsewhere. The solutions are not in those... Uh, uh, gymnastics. They are not in those uh, permutations, those working. It's, it's, not, it's not helping the economy to grow. It's not giving us the stability that we wanted. We need to sit and be carded with one another. Mm -hmm. Say, yes, that we have tried, that we have tried. What is it that can work for us? And it's also important to say this. Because we must also be... Um, we, now we should move away from coping. What has acted everywhere else may not quite work for us, including what I've just said. We need to go through the difficulties that we have gone through, look at what others have done, and come up with what do you think works for us. I want to give an example of something that we have done as a country that is not there in other, I am, I am I'm yet to find it in another country, but it's worked well for us. This CDF concept that was introduced, it has worked very well for this country. Difficulties here and there, people stealing, and we have the cost to take them on, but it has helped this country to move much faster than what was happening there before. And I'm even saying, why wouldn't we even take the devolved unit and model them in the way that uh, we learned CDF? Reduce the administration cost and make sure that the amount of money that goes for development works. That's a model that we have developed, developed as Kenyans. Right. So we should not shy away from trying something for our own, that we think will help us. Okay. We are 42 tribes. So when you go to try something that has worked in another country which has three tribes, it's not going to work in our country. Because right. we have to have, the, we have to have that as a, the guiding, the reality of our times. Mm -hmm. So even as we look at uh, Nairobi city and uh, thinking that uh, once you have a majority party, you can be able to run the government better, it is not working. We need to come up with solutions. On the ground, things are help usually uh, different on that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I also want us to look at, uh, even before we wind up, is uh, the state of uh, safety in terms of our aircrafts. We've seen this, uh, several, especially on our domestic flights, uh, mm -hmm. as we've spoken about it, twice on one airline, of course, and uh, the transport uh, committee uh, led by Kosim speaking about this and saying that on Friday uh, they'll give uh, their uh, statement on this, but it won't be business as usual as far as these uh, instances are concerned. Do we need, and it, it seems like it's very reactionary. We have to wait until the car, you know, rolls off the ferry for us to get into action. We need to have three, four instances of, um, you know, near accidents with our aircrafts for us to step in. How do we deal with this reacti uh, reactive uh, measure, so to, so to speak, uh, Mr. Nyoka? I think the answer lies uh, in Parliament, where the members of Parliament have to be more proactive in evaluating and putting oversight to the policy measures that exist by the various arms of the executive and the various departments. If that were to happen, then we would not be reacting. I'll tell you that disaster happens in Kenya every day, and people only get to be beat, look like, I don't think they ever get serious. They look like they're serious when there's a problem. Um, today, I'll tell you that I know there is a problem in ADC, so fact. But nobody will talk about it. Is it, it that they're it, not aware? It, it, this, this, these reports are in Parliament. If they're, they're in various uh, ministries. Probably mm -hmm. does not reach Parliament. But nobody takes it serious. Till when we'll have a problem, when the people realize that the seed was wrongly done because the board was fighting 
and in the fullness of time, Kenyans don't have food, and then we have a problem. Then we'll be told, oh, now there was short rains, we have a problem, let us import seed. Mm -hmm. We have always had accidents relating to aircrafts, and Kenyans die. Those reports are never made public. It never goes beyond the funeral, where you know, leaders will come and eulogize the, the, the late, the deceased, and, and that is it. So we really have a major problem, and it cuts across all industries. As you say, the ferry, I, I kept asking myself when I saw two Kenyans you know, perish in the, in, in, in the ocean, and I asked myself, how did it happen that the ferry keeps crossing without divers, without capacity to respond in a short interval? At least those two Kenyans could have been saved. Today I see on the, on, on the newspaper, the, the Kenyan Ferry Service admitting that they are operating a death trap. Mm -hmm. I have not read the full story, but clearly, if you do not have measures to respond to that, you have, you have to wait and think. And every time uh, you, you listen to the leaders speak, the other day I was listening to the CS Eugene Wamal was, uh, respond to the, the, the torrents of rain that is sweeping across the country, and they're saying that we've made progress. How long do we keep telling us we've made progress with that when we, we've created every institution? We have a drought management authority, we have now uh, a floods authority, we have every authority for everything else, and it's not working. When we have us as leaders sitting down and saying, we need what really works. If we have a problem with our leadership, if you have a problem with the policy, let us fix it. Let us right. not have fragmentation of issues. So this is a question of those who make policies and those who supervise or as opposed to monitor how the policies are done right. and implemented. It's not for the general Kenyans. Right. Uh, Ms. Anyoka, bringing it back to Honorable Kioni's doorstep, how do you move this forward then from what you're having in terms of what seems like uh, knee-jerk reactions to actual proper oversight and planning so that mm. we are looking forward and not reacting after the incident every single time? Well, one is that um, we have a chair of this committee called Mr. Posing, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a very able uh, chair and I believe that he'll be able to give us a good report and quickly in Parliament because he has done so when um, faced with similar s issues in the past. Right. But two is that uh, it is, a, is again another balancing act. We, our role is to oversight and when we, do, we are doing oversight we have to be very very careful not to micromanage uh, the, the affairs that needs to be managed by the executive and other government agencies. So we have, it is um, it, it's very, it, not very easy to come before. We are like, like almost coming mm. after the fact. Um, and this, are, of course, we need to come a little bit earlier because uh, the red flag may have been laced much earlier uh, by the happenings uh, there before with this airline. But I think, again, that address allows us to address ourselves to one issue. The previous system that we had in this country of managing the, ourselves, where it was not a presidential, it was not a parliamentary, it was a kind of a more grand hybrid thing, where we would sit in parliament with ministers, seems to have been serving us better than what we have today. Or others will call it parliamentary. There will be many uh, terminologies. It's really a question of agreeing with what again works better for us. If it was then, I can assure you that a, a question would have been raised today on the floor of the House to the relevant minister who would have given instructions or would have answered and given Kenyans the direction is likely to take. The approach we have today is when you go back to the committee and the committee must call the CS, the CS will come with the peers, they will come with the people from the Silverstone and the, the process becomes lengthier. In the, pro in the process, you are like you, I hope it doesn't happen, God forbid, you could end up with a worse uh, case scenario. So I, it, I think it's a, it's a situation of oversighting, but we need to be careful not to take on systems that allow us or, or volunteer us to disaster, mm -hmm. like those of, of the ferry. You see, if we had ministers in parliament, the members of parliament from Mombasa, led by Bishiboko, very active members and even the member from Vita, I am certain they will have asked a question on the state of the ferries. But now the issue is that they have been put somewhere. We, you have to look for the CSS in a committee. They can come, they will not come. But when you have them on the floor, even if you are not able to ask them officially, 
you can be able to tell them there is a disaster. This morning, I used the ferry or I've received a report from uh, Pokot. There is cattle rustling that is going on. People have been called, killed. Can you call your officers right away and get them? So it was faster. We would respond to issues faster. The system we have today makes this oversight thing look like you, have, you only run after the history. And we, we, even as we talk about BBI, another issue that requires to be addressed and looked into. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned on the other issue, even if BBI was to, not to come, again, the, the proposed constitution amendment, again through our committee, are quite ahead of the BBI on those issues. Right. But uh, they need to be uh, harnessed. So I, I think it is, uh, we would want to, to ask uh, David, David Posing to move faster. Right. But we need to address our systems. I think the way we are oversighting has been slowed down by the system that we have in place right. uh, currently. And even as we wind up, uh, before we take our parting shots, one thing that you've reiterated, of course, uh, concerning the BBI mm. uh, and when it will be tabled, you also had a presser in, in that particular yeah. regard as mm. far as it's mm. uh, concerned. And it's all about parliamentary systems and representation. What are the people of Daragua saying as far as it's concerned? Because we've heard a lot of uh, the politicians talking about it and why they want this and why they want that. But the people uh, on the ground, I'm sure, just wondering, okay, fine, how do I get more money? How do we pay less taxes? The, the basic issues, what's, what's the sentiment from The Daragua? way to get more money and the way to help the people of Daragua benefit from this uh, BBI thing is one, as a leader, I have the responsibility to address it and as often as I can. Two is, of course, listen to the people of Daragua. And as I go to Daragua, I also pass through Kinagop and I pass through Kipipiri or Kalao or Jororok. Mm -hmm. Nakuru. If I go through the other side, I pass through the whole of the county of Kirinyaga and the whole of the county of Nyeri. I talked about this. Why is it that after every three, four years, an economic momentum that we build dips? For as long as we don't address ourselves, why do we dip? The people of Daragua will not have an extra coin in their pocket. The young people in Yandarwa or in Daragua will not get employment opportunity. We are pumping in one million Kenyans every year. And for us to be able to create employment, we must grow this economy to 10% and beyond. By 10% and if possible beyond. If we continue growing it at 5% and 4%, unemployment levels will continue increasing. What are these issues that slow us down every time we pick? Mm -hmm. One of them is the way we do our politics, the way we compete for political positions, and perhaps what we think comes with every political win. That must be addressed by BBI. And for us to be able to address that, you must quickly and, and without blinking separate 2022 from the solutions that we want to put on the table. Okay. They should not help you get to, to presidency or win 2022, and they should not block you to get there. Right. But if they end up doing that and Kenyans get employed, I think we'll have achieved why it is that we were elected. Dennis, uh, I'll have you respond on this as well, because some uh, people talking about the fact that, okay, fine, even as we wait for the report, it seems like as a country we've almost changed everything. When we had, we didn't have multi-party, we did that. When the former President Moy was seemingly the impediment, we changed that. We had a coalition government, we had prime ministers and deputy prime ministers, we reformed the constitution. Yet we're still experiencing, when it comes to the five-year cycle, the same problem over again. Some people are saying, okay, hold up, Let's look at all of these guys. Probably but, they. But as you take it to Anyona, because <laughs> I want him to take, to take this after I've said this. <laughs> this BBI does not necessarily mean amending a constitution. No, no. It's actually implementing the constitution with some speed, to, in my opinion. Any other statute that we need to do in parliament needs to be done. Okay. We do, we, it is not a must that we must amend the constitution. Right. We have first and foremost to be faithful to what we put, we give ourselves in the constitution <coughs> and even look for even easier solutions. Because amending the constitution could be a heavy thing and you can see the political temperatures that are coming with it. But again, let's be honest to Kenyans. Let's be, let's really just be faithful right. to the reasons why we okay. were given the responsibility that we have. Yes, back to you, Mr. Nyoka. If, if, if we were to take the trajectory where Honorable Kenyan is saying we'd not need to amend the constitution, then we will have a sober debate. Right. Then Kenyans will, these are discussions that we should have every day. I agree with him that we do not need to have an economy that attempts to take off and it dips soon after take off. That is very true. But the reasoning, the basis for which this is happening, 
needs to be discussed objectively, fairly, without attaching political interest. What if BBI was to take the direction where the president is telling us and uh, Raila is telling us that we have to support BBI? Now, we don't know what people, Ken Kenyans don't know what they are going to support. We've not read it. We do not know whether there's a constitutional amendment they are proposing. We do not know whether the fears that Kenyans have that we want to create positions for other people is what will be sneaked in with the view of saying in the name of the handshake. Kenyans have their own reservations. But right. if we are to have genuine discussion on how we resolve the problems of this country, including, and the major ones that we need, to, the very basic ones which you can be able to deal with, is term corruption is to recover the assets that have been stolen, is to block anybody who, has, who is actually a thief from holding public office. Uh -huh. If we were to do that... Mm. And the good thing about... The, they are all that in the, 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 they are in the BBI. Uh -huh. <laughs> Corruption, uh, ethnic patronage, antagonism, the issue of responsibility, devolution, they are in the BBI. And provided for in our constitution. Right. So it is looking at and implementing the constitution. If we need to tinker with the constitution, Kidogo, that be seen. But I totally want to agree <laughs> that those who have interest for 2022, right. and I can tell you there may be many who have not declared, uh, they need to be encouraged to continue having those interests. But they should yes. not use the BBI as a, vehicle as a platform, BBI. but they should also not block the good in, uh, work that is likely to come out of this. Jeff, okay. even as, 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 we as, finish, wind up, very as I wind up, uh, which I, I need to restate very clearly, I believe this country has a nerve loss. This country has one of the best constitutions with its own challenges. If it were to be implemented the way it should be, and we do not need any initiative for it to be implemented, we have enough institutions. In fact, I think even in the, the, the various um, uh, organizations that we have created under the law are way too many. We simply need to even reduce some of them and, and let the various stakeholders, the executive, the, the, the judiciary, the legislators, let them do their work. If they were to do it faithfully and serve Kenyans faithfully, three quarters of the problems would be eliminated. Okay. We do not need uh, uh, <laughs> an, another initiative building bridges or building houses, whichever <laughs> initiative that they want to create. No, but we'll, that. we'll have to end up at that particular like point in time. Up. We are actually at the loss of time. We'll have to pick it up from there. We need uh, many course, building this, bridges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been a newspaper review uh, this morning, looking at the biggest stories of the day. And of course, still awaiting uh, the BBI report and what is uh, held therein. Uh, Dennis Anyoka, thank you so much for making time this morning. Advocate of the High Court. And of course, Honorable Jeremiah Kioni, uh, Daragua MP and Chair of the CIOC. Thank you so much for making time this morning for the discussions. We'll await. When the BBI report comes, we'll discuss in detail right here. Thank Definitely. You. Thank you so much for that. We take a short break. We are back on the other side. We get interactive.